how you learn. So this is, I think, really a lifelong process, but I feel like the sooner you start working on this, the easier it's gonna be on you. So for me, I took a little test, um, but it's not necessarily uber valid, but it gave me kind of some insight into what to look for and the different types of learning styles that work best for me. So I'm gonna put that link in the description below if you're interested in checking that out. So the point of this is to understand how it is that you learn and try to find strategies that link up with that. Another helpful tool that I use to figure out how to learn better and how I learn specifically is I read the book, Make It Stick. So Make It Stick is about how the brain works. So according to the summary, I'm just gonna read it out loud to you. Drawing on cognitive psychology and other fields, Make It Stick offers techniques for becoming more productive learners and cautions against study habits and practice routines that turn out to be counterproductive. The book speaks to students, teachers, trainers, athletes, and all those interested in lifelong learning and self-improvement. So it kind of gives you some insight into some of the best practices that you can use. Um, this is not necessarily targeting like modalities, like this doesn't really mean like, oh, if you're a visual learner, if you're an auditory learner, that's not really what it's hitting at. It hits more at different important aspects of learning like repetition, interleaving. Like let's say you have a pack of flashcards, mixing up the flashcards would be a good example of interleaving, not having them in the same order, um, and other strategies like that. So that's kind of helpful. I think for everybody, it doesn't matter what type of learner you are. I would definitely check that book out. It's by Peter Brown, so I think it offers some very interesting and pretty universal strategies that you can take advantage of. Oh, if you're interested, I also made a video on basically like how I learn, like how I study. And I'm gonna link it over here so you can check it out. I really wanted to touch on that before I got into note taking because if you're the main character, if the point is that you're understanding the material, then the note taking really is secondary. You can give it varying levels of importance based on how you learn. But if you don't know how you learn, then I think that's already like, we're having problems at the foundation. Well, anyways, I think it's really important to understand how you learn so that you can take good notes, the best notes that work for you. So that's why I wanted to explain my little philosophy on learning. But now we can move on to some actual strategies that you can use when you're taking your notes. I think a really important part of taking notes is that you're synthesizing them. So basically what that means is that you are writing your own notes, not necessarily just copying it down from you know, the PowerPoint or whatever. And you definitely have to think to do that. It's not necessarily easily, especially the first times that you're doing it. So a way that I try to approach this is that I avoid writing exactly what I see um, on a PowerPoint or what I hear from a, a lecturer, because I really wanna be writing my own notes in ways that I'm gonna understand it and in a way, of course, that's correct because that's really important to understand correctly what, what they're talking about. But I think a big part of it is that if you write it, you're gonna understand it better. It's in the words that you use and you're gonna you know, grow as a student, you're gonna learn. So I've recently been finding that when I listen to a lecture or when I read the PowerPoint, if I ask myself questions about how it's working, it's kind of like forcing yourself to be active and interact with the material like right when you're first being introduced to it. So the harder that it feels to like write down these notes, the stronger it's gonna stick. Therefore, you're gonna be able to remember it better later on. You're gonna create stronger connections. And I really, that's, that's what I'm really looking for. I want the connection. I ask myself, how is this working? And why is this happening? Or why is this important? And I find that usually like, it makes it a lot easier to find holes in my knowledge. So as soon as I notice like, oh, I don't really understand that, then you can ask the lecturer right away. Like they're introducing, the information, I'm sure you're not the only person that has that question. So that's been super helpful in being able to write effective notes because then you have notes that you've created. Another thing that I like to do is I really like to draw pictures. So I find that a lot of times, especially when trying to find ways to test yourself, it can get kind of frustrating and difficult to like figure out a point where to start. And so I find that if I draw a picture and I'm looking for gaps of knowledge or where I have like the illusion of knowledge, I feel like it's like a window into you know being able to amplify your understanding so i think it's super helpful and i didn't really pay attention to pictures as a note taking strategy before like trying to draw diagrams and all that until i took this neuroanatomy course and so i tried to take as much as i could from this course but one thing that i just found absolutely helpful above all of the other strategies that she did was to draw pictures i think the reason that this works is because it really forces you to synthesize something and explain something in your own words and then you have something that you can refer to thereafter so you can go through the reasoning. It provides a starting place to really like approach the material and I just found it really helpful overall in making things stick. So give it a try, see if it works, let me know. Now, another thing that I've been noticing recently, I think especially after COVID and everybody kind of working from home 
for an extended period of time and being excessively on electronic devices i'm sure that's affected our attention to different capacities based on how things kind of you know have been developing. I'm very interested in attention overall and I even switched from my iPhone to a Nokia for an extended period of time which you can check out here in some of these corners. You can check out that kind of little experiment I did and I learned so much about my own attention in that time and so here are some of the strategies based on that experience where I kind of felt like I regained control over my attention and now I'm using those strategies like in classes and in things that I really want to give my attention to. So I really think attention is kind of like a light beam, right? You can point it wherever it goes. And I think it's super important that we're doing what we actually want to be doing, which is basically we need to focus on our intentions. And I want to put myself in positions for success. If I notice that there's some things that are going to put me in positions that are going to be more distracting and not necessarily in positions for success, that's what I want to avoid at all costs. So, I mean, Sitting in the back of the class can make it more tempting to not necessarily pay attention to what's going on in lecture. Go to class prepared and if you notice that like your electronics are distracting you, it's time, you know, maybe don't bring them. Go back to paper and pen kind of situations. I definitely think attention is related to practice, so practice even in five minute intervals to try to increase your attention span. So last but not least, after I go to class and I write my notes, if I write them, or if I type them up. Um, what I really like to do is to go over them and kind of organize them in a way that makes sense to you, make sure you're synthesizing it and describing the concepts appropriately and that they're accurate. I really like to make sure that it's clear to understand, so I like to use bullet points um, and lists quite a bit. I like to use tables if I have to, but I want to organize my notes so that they're easy to read later on and so they summarize the points about what we went over in class. If there's anything I missed, I want to address this as soon as possible. So this is kind of making a final sheet after every class. And then it's really great because once you get to the test, now you have your own pre-made study guide that you can refer to and, you know, hopefully make the connection stronger. So thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you liked it. If you did, please don't forget to subscribe and join the crew. Give it a like and comment. Let me know what you thought. Uh, if you guys like videos like this, you know, let me know and I'll look to make some more based on any new, you know, strategies I learn. And yeah, I'll catch you guys in the next video. Bye! She's a Mona Lisa